The key factor in immigration is the numbers. Almost nothing will have more impact on how you live the rest of your life in the United States or the kind of country that your children and grandchildren live in than how Congress sets these numbers. For the 200 years from 1770 to 1970, this country took in about 250,000 immigrants a year. Congress brings a lot more than that today. And I'm going to show you the future that current numbers, if not changed, will give us. I find this to be an incredibly frightening future. Some of you are going to be angry when you see it. But please remember that if immigration is a problem, the problem is not immigrants. The problem is immigration policy and the officials who set that policy. If you're an immigrant, nothing I say here tonight is a criticism of you. You have the same stake in America's future as I do. We're sticking to numbers tonight. Good, solid, non-controversial numbers based on data and projections from the U.S. Census Bureau. Now, this was the United States at the end of the first census in 1790 when it found 4 million people. We grew incredibly rapidly from 1790 to 1915, just before World War I. The Census Bureau declared that we no longer had a frontier. The second 100 million grew much faster to 1970. What was the role of immigration in those first 200 million? Well, contrary to popular myth, we were never a country in which new immigrants and the birth immigrants were the majority of our population growth. The vast majority of our population growth always came from our incredibly high native fertility. Even at the end of this period, in the 1950s and 1960s, we were still running immigration. It was around the average, 250,000. But all that changed after 1970. In a time of great national concerns about sustainability, the baby boomers, starting to enter their childbearing years, adopted a fertility that was replacement level, about an average of two children per couple. The green that you see rising above the blue is the population growth that would have happened if Congress had not forced higher immigration and would rise to 257 million in 2020 and then basically stabilize through 2050. This was the Earth Day vision that the class of 1970 had chosen. Instead, Congress constantly increased immigration from 1970 on. In the 1970s, Congress increased immigration levels from the 250,000 that was traditionally and from the 50s and 60s to 425,000 a year. And then in the 1980s, Congress increased immigration still further from the 425,000 a year to 635,000 per year. That wasn't enough for Congress. Population wasn't growing fast enough. So in 1990, they passed a, another big increase. And since 1990, we have averaged about, about the, uh, this is not the, uh, the uh, this is, this is really kind of an unsustainable level. Uh, here, let me. Since 1990, Congress has been running immigration at more than a million a year, four times higher than the traditional level. Now, this doesn't even include the illegal immigration. The American people never asked for any of these increases. Polls show that there was never a time when much more than 10% of the American people wanted higher immigration. In 1996, President Clinton's National Commission on Sustainability urged big reductions in immigration, back to something like traditional level, in order to allow the population of the United States to stabilize so we could be a sustainable society. But Congress ignored those recommendations. Now, this is what the census says actually happened since 1970. This is the actual population growth to 2010. The red represents the population growth forced by Congress and its immigration decisions. Instead of the U.S. never reaching the third hundred million, it reached the third hundred million before 2010. And for the first time in our history, the majority of our population growth came from new immigrants and the births to immigrants. Using Census Bureau projections of fertility and mortality, 
I would like to know what lies in our future. The fact is, Congress has paid no attention to that future. It generally operates on what's ahead in one or two years or maybe the next election cycle. For the most part, our public policy is set without any regard to what it's going to lead to in future generations. They keep the future draped from us. Let's see what's behind that curtain. As you can see, we are headed to add our fourth 100 million by 2040. And by the time today's college students enter the last phase of their career, in 2050, the Census Bureau data suggests we will have 437 million people in our national community. Look at the difference between that red line that Congress is taking us to and the green line, which was the choice of the American people through their own private decisions about their family size. Imagine how that changes the way this country handles its biggest problems. And of course, the trajectory doesn't stop in 2050, it moves on. Now let's see where we're headed by the end of this century. Let's move this 2050, let's move it over here, and let's go from 2010 to 2100. Oh my, it's, it's off the charts again. We'd probably have to blow the roof off of this building. To see the top of this, let's pull this down so instead of the 200 million, we'll start down here at 300 million. And as you can see, we will be adding our fifth 100 million in 2070 and our sixth 100 million just before the end of the century, before apparently hitting about 625 million people. That's approaching a half billion more people in this country than we had in 1970. Look around you. The people in the United States are not able to achieve the quality of life they want with 300 million people. Are we really comfortable? making our descendants live with 600 million people packed into this country? This will happen because of our immigration choices today. This is not something that could be. It's not something that might be. This is something that will be if we don't change the immigration numbers. But if you want a different future, you can pretty dramatically change that future. What if we help the class of 2010 do what the class of 1970 had intended to do before Congress destroyed the stabilizing vision. This yellow line represents the change that could happen in our population growth trajectory if we would immediately adopt a replacement level immigration. That is, bringing in the same number of immigrants as people leave the country every year. And right now that would be around our traditional level. There would be immediate reductions in infrastructure demands for those of us alive today. We could enjoy the benefits of cutting in half all the extra demands on our infrastructure, cutting in half all the extra congestion. By 2050, we would have 80 million fewer people to accommodate than if we leave the status quo immigration in place. 80 million, how much is 80 million? 80 million was the entire population of the entire United States when President Theodore Roosevelt was desperately trying to create national parks to keep those 80 million people from destroying the natural heritage of this country. Now we have four times that much. The difference in the scenarios becomes really astounding when you go out to the end of the century. The question is, do we allow immigration to double our population and add another 300 million into other communities at the end of this century? Or do we reduce immigration so that we hold the extra demands on our society to perhaps one quarter? The people living in 2100 will have no choice in this. That is a future that does not have to happen. We can make the right choice now.